So today I was <laughs> Hello. Today I was gonna do a video on my BMW E thirty four five series, but it had other ideas because well well this happened. Oh dear. Yes, it is broken down. But what happened? Well, let's find out. So, if I'm honest, when I bought the car, I noticed it was already looking cool from the radiator, uh, which I had been topping up as I went. However, recently, I kind of forgot to top it up and, well, it's ran a bit low in cooling and it's, as I was driving it, it's, it's overheated and it's burst the already weak radiator. Hence, as you've seen, it was cooling all over the road and big plumes of steam coming out, which was a bit concerning, I won't lie. But, yeah, not great. So while I've got the car in bits and the system is drained of coolant, I thought I'd do a bit of uh, preventative maintenance. So as well as doing the, the radiator, I'm also going to be doing water pump and thermostat. So I'll have a look at the new radiator. Just check it as the right one. Hmm. That doesn't look quite right. Looks a bit a bit small. I think we're going to compare it with the old one. Yeah, so there's definitely a size difference there. That new one is quite a bit smaller than the old one. But um I mean the hose hose connections they all look to be in the same position as well as the the uh, coolant sensor, but yeah, it's just quite a bit smaller, so that's not good. That's not good at all. I have to figure out what to do about this now. Gloves, safety first. Most of the other ones get dirty hands. So you may or may not have noticed that I've actually already got the. You may or may not have noticed I've actually already got the radiator out and that is because I was a bit anxious about what had actually went wrong and I just wanted to figure it out to find out what was uh, what had caused the massive flow of steam. So yeah, the radiator's already out. So the next step, what we're going to do is we're going to take this fan off which requires a bit of jiggery pokey. So there's a wee bit of, uh, wee bit of an act. It unscrews on a central shaft that goes through the, the water pump and you basically 32 mil spanner go on and i've got a screwdriver for, for leverage to stop it from turning to stop the pulleys from turning and hopefully it will come off relatively easy i don't think i don't know when the last time this was off might never have been off so it might be quite tight but uh yeah we'll see how it goes so i'm just gonna get the spanner oh, spanner on here get the Screwdriver in for leverage to stop the pulley from turning. And uh, you just got to try and pull it because it's uh, quite tight. Uh, it is also a left handed thread, that is something to note. Um, you just think I'm tightening it. Oh, and there we go. It's off. Let's ease up here for a second. So, in theory, No, oh, we're gonna have to. So I should now be able to simply unscrew this all the way. I thought I might have been able to turn. No, I'm gonna have to just unscrew it like this. As much of a turn as I can get. I'm a good mechanic. Working, 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 working. Right, must nearly be there by now. Surely, pop off. Oh, turn it just about. Oh, and there we go. One fan. What I'm going to do now is, if I can, take a quick snapshot of the the belts where the 
where they go because I need to know exactly where it goes when I put it back on. Yeah, I'm going to take, probably do a wee drawing actually just to make it a bit easier when I go to put it back in. So now we have access to the, the tensioner pulley, we can go ahead and release the tension in the belt. Uh, so it is an 8mm Allen head. And then you just put this in here like this. And uh, you should. There we go, it's moving. That is the that is the belt off there. I'm just gonna keep it on there and then I'll lie it down like that. Maybe I just want it to fall off. That should be fine. So there we can see the water pump pulley is now free. So now what we need to do is we'll get this pulley off and then the water pump. Easy. So that is I'm gonna guess 10 mil because yep, I just think I think everything on the car is just 10 mil. And yes, I do have a 10 mil socket. Mine has not disappeared. And again, it's just going to be a case of, so that's going to turn like that, so I need to use my screwdriver again. And uh, we'll try and get some sort of, try and get. Some sort of purchase on it like that, without damaging the, the thread. That came very easy. That's kind of worrying. Let's see there. Oh. Hope these aren't shearing, by the way. I hope they're not coming easy because they're shearing. That was bad. Are these even on? Are these even tight? Look at that. That was. That was very easy. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but. Okay, that's. One. Two. Do I jinx it and say at least it's not raining tonight? Probably not. Probably not a wise idea. Right, and then this last one is just a wee bit tight. There we are, as we can see, the pillow is already. Keep that inside. Yes, I'm using camping cup for my nuts and bolts. There we are. So that is the pulley off. As you can see, the water pump is now here. So there is how many? One, two, three, four nuts on there to remove. So I've got my extension on to get into it a bit easier. And it is 10 mil once again. So let's shear it. Everything seems quite loose in this car. I'm a bit worried. Doesn't feel or sound great, but it's probably fine. That seems okay. What I'm going to do is. Oh, okay. They're not bolts, they're wee, wee nuts. Oh, there we are. Last nut. Now, can't quite remember how this. I think it should just pop out. He says, and out, screwdriver and out. I don't think that's the same, but there we go. Bit of brute force ignorance. 
there is a an o-ring with quite a bit of resistance to overcome the suction of it but get the screwdriver in there I can maybe surely Don't really want to try too much on, on that bit. Aha! Oh god. Should have probably got a bucket to catch all that water, but but there we are. So yes, one water pump, and actually. Bought it just in time, like it's all cracked. Pretty happy that I decided to do the water pump as a precaution because, yeah. Yeah. That was just about to go. Lucky. So this is the, the old water pump here. And as you can see, it's pretty badly cracked and it's all brittle and it's uh, not in a good state at all. And actually... I hold the impeller and try and turn it, it's not actually turning at all, uh, which is leading me to think that this is what actually caused the overheating in the first place, and not what I said earlier on about the the uh, the coolant being low. Um, the coolant being low didn't help, obviously, but I think this is the actual cause of the overheating because that's turning, but the impeller's not turning. It's not doing its job. It's not pumping the water around uh, the way it should. Um, it might be moving a wee bit, but it's not doing its job efficiently. There's any sort of drag in that, it's not doing it. So, uh, I believe this is the cause of the overheating, which then burst the already weak radiator. Um, so yeah, that. And also another thing to note as well is this is the old, the old style, so it's got a plastic impeller, uh, which after a few heat cycles they they go brittle, and this that happens basically. They all they just break apart. So we caught this just in time. If we compare this with the new one, metal impeller. Uh, so this shouldn't go brittle. Uh, it should last a lot longer than that one. It should last a lifetime of the car, really. Um, and as you can see, it's it's turning the way it should. So it will pump the water much more efficiently and should be able to deal with the heat cycles a bit better than the plastic one. So we'll go ahead and put this new one in. And uh, and that's that's one job done at least. You join me the next morning. I ran out of time last night. I had other things to do, so uh, but we're back and I have have a cup of coffee. I'm not quite awake yet, but that's all I hope. Anyway, so yesterday I was ready to install the new water pump. However, it was a wee bit tight going in, and I was going to go get some fairy liquid just to smear around the the o ring. Just to help it go in a bit easier, so I have just such a tool. I'm going to do this. I'm going to put some take the glove off for this. Hope oh, that's a bit too much, but I'll just give it a wee. A wee coating all the way around, and what this will do is it will just help help this go in a bit easier, which should hopefully make it go in without any issues. That's suitably smeared. Right, set that there for now. So we're going to take our pump and make sure it's in the, the correct orientation. This like a circle, circle bit here was at the bottom left if you look at it from the front of the car. So I'm going to clean this back in. Hopefully. So 
think what I might be able to do is to use the nuts, put one in each corner and try and screw it on. You just need to be careful not to nick the, the o-ring because if we nick that o-ring uh, then it's going to leak and uh, it's going to be a pointless exercise. We'll get one up here if we can. Trying to push this and turn the nut on at the same time. It's not easy. It's not easy. Um, that's not working out for me there. Um, right. I'm gonna try tightening that bottom one a wee bit. See if it just see if it pulls it in any. Okay, what it is? Warm today, summer has arrived. Nice. Okay, so that's. And a wee bit might be able to get this one on now. That's. And. Yes. Yes. All the yes. Right, where's the other nut? Lost me nuts. Right, there we go. I am mechanic. Okay, so. <clears throat> that is one water pump fitted. Job done. Well, that bit of it is. I can enjoy some more coffee. Next up is the thermostat housing, which I've actually uh, never done before. I've never actually done a thermostat or a thermostat housing uh, on any car, so yeah, just work out what bolts to remove for this. So it looks like 10mm there, see underneath. This feels like a 10mm there. And then Slightly bigger one here, what's that? Maybe 14, 13. So, yeah, we'll take this out now. So, we'll do the 10 mil since I've already got my socket on it. Where is it? Sunny, but I can't see. Right. Oh, there we go. That is loose now. We'll get this 10 mil on the bottom. Assuming it's a 10 mil. It's a 10 mil. Those cracking sounds. As much as they don't sound great, they are very satisfying. Right. So then we have this bigger. This bigger one right here, which let's play a game of guess the size. So I'm gonna say I'm going to say 14 mil. See if I'm right. Oh, I think it might be a 13. So I'm going to guess 13 mil. <laughs> 13 mil. There we go. That was my first guess. Whoa. Right. This is a good point to mention now that I actually have. Uh, no idea what I'm doing at this point, I'm just taking bits apart. Oh, that was a satisfying crack. In theory, unless there's another... Ah, there's another nut. Another tent. Was that another one? Have oh, I done that one? No, I've not done that one. Smell that. I, I can smell burning. Nothing's running. Apart from me, maybe I'm burning. That wouldn't be good. Right now, we should be able to take this off. Oh, there we go. Okay, there we go. There's our thermostat housing. Now that's out, we've got the thermostat, which in theory should pop out the same way as the, the water pump. Use a screwdriver to try and Okay, 
and that is one thermostat out so that is the thermostat out and we have the new thermostat That's like ever so slightly different. And it has the same dimensions. So yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this face a wee bit of a, a wee bit of a clean, and uh, and then we'll put the new thermostat in. Took the took the radiator back to the, the shop this morning, and they have they have said it'll be it'll be Monday now before they can contact the supplier. To potentially get us a new one, so yeah, the car's gonna be off the road for a wee bit longer, which is annoying, but yeah, uh, nothing we can really do about that. At least we've got a nice new water pump, uh, and we've got new thermostat. And uh, all we need to do after that is pop up with coolant, and then hope it doesn't overheat. So, go ahead and clean that up and get the new thermostat in. So, that's what we're gonna do next. So this is meant to be a, an educational tutorial video, but I'm not sure what people are going to be learning from me. I want to clarify, this is not the right way to do this. And you should have a proper, proper scraping tool for this because this could damage the surface here. But I'm going very light. It should be fine. Just getting lost off. Make sure there's no rubbish on there because any any bit of rubbish can cause the seal not to seal properly. It won't sit down right, so. Oh, okay. New thermostat. I'm going to put the right into the top. Seems like the right way to do it. That's in. Okay, stick this housing back on. This one here. You put that one in and then we get a bolt in the bottom. Okay. Now I'm gonna get the pulley back in a second. Uh, okay. I'm not in. Try and get rid the, the whole list. Oh, I think I've got it. That's one, two, three, and four. I'll get my spanner in there. My neighbour's coming. Oh, right. So that's the pillow back on. And then what we need to do now is put the, the belt back on. So, it's been two weeks since I was at the car last uh, because, well, I had to wait on a new radiator coming. Uh, and it was a, a 10 day, a 10 working day lead time on the delivery for it so this has been sitting here for two weeks so the last thing i done on it was i was putting the i was putting the thermostat housing on and the belts so off camera that's now complete they're fully bolted up and the belt is now on so the next step is to go and look at the new radiator make sure it is the right one this time and then fit it so here is the new radiator here as we can see it is the correct size it is the correct one for the car we have all of the ports which all match up and the dimensions of it are the exact same so uh all i've done so far is i've taken off there's a little rubber bit here for the mount it goes there uh, i'll need to get the right size screwdriver to remove the coolant temperature sensor that goes from the old one there 
uh, into this new one, it's currently blanked off, but it'll go there. And then fill it up with coolant and pray for no leaks. But before I can go ahead with that, there's just one more thing I need to put in first, which is the fan. So I'm going to screw this on, which just goes on here, like so. And remember, it is a left handy thread. I need the big spanero, which I prepared earlier. So it should just go on here. Ah, that's that one. So it's just a case of winding this up. It should really be hand tight. Uh, kind of going. There we go. Give it a good spin. So that's it, butted up, and with this it doesn't need to be tight because it's left hand thread. Once the engine starts turning, it will naturally tighten itself. So all we need to do is give it, that's it. Then we just take this, which is the kind of shroud cover. We'll just, we'll just place that like so. And that just means when you put the radiator back in, that's just ready to go, and it's a lot easier uh, to put it on that way. Now, I think, I think it's time to get the radiator in. Squeeze. Squeeze. So, here we have one new radiator. Oh, no, look at that. Oh. Slot in gently. And it wants to locate. Come around the other side now. I'm going to just put these hoses on. And then this was on. So that's not on yet. That's fine. What we need now is these little clips, which go in here. That is not the best, but maybe we need new clips at some point. Okay, that's, that was a mistake putting that on there like that. So that was a bit of a wrestle, but I had to move the camera out of the way just, out the way just a wee bit just to, just to get into that wee bit there. But the clip is now on. It's like that side. This clip's a wee bit loose, but we'll get a new clip at some point. It's not the end of the world. But yeah, all we need to do now is we'll put this shroud back on, which should be easy enough. But knowing this car, oh, that? that was too easy. I don't think that side's on right, but we'll... oh no, it's full fill off again. Oh, it was on. I had it on. Right. I need hands that are thinner than cocktail sticks to get in there. Hmm. Screwdriver. Where is it? Oh, it's over there. Ah. Right. Now we just need to poke that while lifting gently. This side pops out, I swear. Oh no, something popped out. Ah. Right, that side is in loosely now. That bit's on, that bit's on. These sides are in, just need this bit to pop up now. Oh no, the whole thing's came out. Now it's in. Is it? Oh no. I've broke a bit. That was going so well. It's okay, I don't think that bit was entirely important. Anyway. These are the mishaps that you don't see on other channels. Now we just need to put these wee clips in. 
screwdriver as a hammer, and that's it in. New radiator is in, shroud is on. Uh, we still need to replace the coolant temperature sensor down here somewhere for the one that's on the old radiator. Coolant temperature sensor, top up, and pray that we don't overheat. And it's good practice to replace the copper washer because what they do is the when it goes in, they crush, which gives it a good seal. So because this has been tightened, it's potentially already been crushed. So if don't want to use it again, I'll replace it with a nice new one. The perfect size. There you go. Screw it in like so. Give it a wee nip. That feels good. The man at the shop said the green stuff was the correct stuff. So I've just finished filling up and I think, I think I'm ready to go for the first start. Fingers crossed. Should sure be fine. So it's now up to temperature. I think I've got a little bit of heat coming through the the cabin air vents. Uh, so, but it's still not quite there yet. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take it for a, a road test just to try and get everything flowing a bit. And hopefully that will be the system bled and the E34 will be back on the road once again. Okay, so I'm back from the test drive and I think that's it. I think it's bled. I'm getting nice warm air through the vents and the temperature staying in the middle. And the, the level seems to be roughly where it should be. Um, but yeah, we're going to keep an eye over it. Keep an eye over it. We're going to keep an eye on it over the next uh, couple of days, or the, the next few times I drive it. Uh, make sure make sure I bring some spare water just in case we need to top up. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that's it. So I'm going to end the video there. Uh, it's been an interesting one, this one. Um, Probably the biggest job I've done on a car myself. Uh, and I've not had any help at all. It's just been me using YouTube, using Google forums, trying to learn as I go. But uh, yeah, I think it's been successful. And um, obviously unplanned, but breakdowns aren't usually planned. So, so yeah, I've not shown you too much of the, the driving of this car yet because I, I want to keep that for a separate video and go over some of my driving impressions. So stay tuned for that i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have please give it a like comment and subscribe if you haven't already really appreciate it and um yeah i'll see you for the next one